Hello there everybody and welcome to a new video for Brotato. In this one I got 10 tips and tricks dedicated for beginners, people who are new to the game, and it's generally stuff that's pretty easy to understand even if you have little to no knowledge about the game, but the stuff does make a difference, promise. So let's get right into it with number one. I want to talk about weapon combos and how to understand what combos with what. So. Here we see, first of all, weapons have here a category, here it's precise and elemental, here's medical and precise, and the more of these you stack together, if all your six weapons have the precise tag, you get bonuses for that. That's one thing you should always use. The other thing which is important to note are these little icons here. The little sword stands for melee, there's also elemental and range damage. It's really important that your weapons have not all different damage types because otherwise it will be really really hard for your build to fully utilize your power-ups. So ideally you want to stay with two different damage types and you want to have weapons that are either well all melee or all ranged. Either way try to have not too huge gaps in range between your weapons because ideally you want to have all your six weapons firing all at once. It is no must-have that all your weapons have the same categories, but I personally always think like, I want some weapons that have AOE, some weapons that hit hard, and some weapons that hit fast. So that's kind of like a holy trinity, which will bring you through most of the game. Specialization is always allowed, but with this uh, general application, you will be well off for the difficulties all the way up to five. Five is a little bit of a different uh, number but altogether you will have a lot of fun if you string things together like that. So let's head on over to number two. We were talking a lot now about offenses, but this game also offers a lot of defensive options. And let me put it down like this. There is no avoidance of defensive stats. Defensive stats aren't optional. You need them to win the game. So you can go either way. I would deeply recommend you to pick up some maximum HP, HP regeneration and some dodge and some armor. Knife leech is good for weapons that hit fast but is not really useful for slow hitting weapons because life leech does only apply a chance to regain one HP. So basically you have a percentile chance of gaining one HP here. So that's lifesteal. So it's best with fast weapons. You can mix and match however you want, but I can really not stress out enough that this game feels nightly impossible to win without going deeper into uh, defensive measures. That's really, really important. And uh, you can go into defenses as soon as you feel like you're uh, totally able to kill the enemies. After that point, it's really smart to invest into defenses. So, number three is another thing that I really, really found useful. Here in the options, in the gameplay section, there is a manual aim thing. It is pretty cool that the game does all the aiming for you. But I have this configuration, manual aim on mouse press, which allows me to do this. So I can hold down my left mouse button and uh, I can tell my weapons which way to go. This is when you want to burn down specific enemies or you want to get out of a uh, hot situation, extremely useful. The basic setup of the game, just auto aim, is totally good for like 90% of the time. But sometimes it's really cool to be able to just focus into a certain direction because you want to kill that tree, because you want to kill that boss, because you want to kill that enemy in your way, whatever. So it's, it's really important to utilize that if you are in a need there. So that's been that. Let's get on over to number four. I want to talk about how important this reroll button is. It's super super powerful to use your money to get as many power-ups as possible here because at the end of the day that money is only good if you have spent it there are a couple of power-ups in the game that allow you to just uh, hoard money and have some benefit from it but that's not the standard here so keep re-rolling and if you ever see something that you want to keep but you can't afford it the lock command allows you to just keep the stuff up until the next rotation. So, like you see here, that goat skull is now in there. So, I've locked these two in. And now I can rest assured that these things will be available next round. So, 
To sum it up again, don't sit on that money. It's really important that you spend it. There are a couple of character concepts that break this rule, but like 90% of the characters, it's best to keep re-rolling until you were able to spend your money. It's no good to just sit on piles of material because you will be weaker than you need to be, and the faster you kill, the faster you earn money. So let's head on over to number five. There are bosses in the game, and the lower difficulty levels only one, and the higher you climb in the ladder, the more bosses come. One thing I cannot stress out hard enough, you don't have to kill them. There is a timer on top of the level, and once that's down, you have won the level, and it's all good. So, if you feel like that boss is too hard for you to beat, or his attacks are up to kill you, just run away and just survive. It's, all, it's not necessary to kill those guys. On the other hand, if your build is strong enough to take down those guys, this is pretty good, because that means you gain super rare items, but by all means, it is not necessary, and I have often won the game with stuff that, uh, well, wasn't able to kill bosses at all. So, let's get on over to number six. You should avoid buying not too synergistic items. With that, with those, I mean items that are like going off for um, a luck chance. Like there is an item that deals damage whenever you pick up um, stuff based on your luck. This sounds like a useful item, but as a matter of fact, most of the time it's a uh, wasted slot if you're not totally opting into a luck build. And the game has several of these items, which are sounding like a good idea, because come on, it's useful to set your enemy on fire on every hit, but if you don't have elemental damage backing it up, it is actually a waste of money. What I'm trying to say with that is try to find out what stuff you need and what stuff you don't need because it is really really easy to pick up oh that looks nice and this looks nice and this could be useful so there it, this is a, a art in itself to focus on stuff that you actually need and stuff that you don't need but the better you get at this the better your builds get so try to keep an eye out on what's really synergizing with your build and what just sounds like a good idea but would be better off in a more dedicated build to that so let's get on over to number seven play with the stats of your character. So every character has a very distinct skill set and most of the time that skill set invites you very directly to go for a specific build path. Right now for example I'm playing the crazy character which is really really good with precision weapons. Everything else is a little bit of, is pretty much a lost cause on him and all in all it's really important to focus your build around the specialties of your character. The fun part here is that many characters validate several different play styles to actually be successful with them so there is not really a one-size-fits-all solution here but uh, altogether the better you get at finding out what's extremely synergistic with your specific character the more powerful you will go to give you one example here um I accidentally picked up an engineering upgrade at the beginning of the run, which was totally a bad decision. A good decision for this character would be all things that give, for example, minus dodge. Because our dodge is already horrible, this character is not meant to be played around dodge. So we can totally pick up items that make our dodging worse. Or here, items that reduce our range damage, also very good for this character. Every character has a lot of different ways and means to get more powerful and while some items are entirely useless for one guy they will be a godsend for the other guy so try to find an ideal way for every character while having fun playing it and you will see that this game offers a lot of different approaches okay so number eight i want to talk about a little bit less cryptic and a little bit less theoretic I want to talk about trees. Those guys here, I punched one down right there. So trees are really, really valuable. Not only do they give you three materials instead of just one, most monsters only give one material, they give you a healing fruit. And also to add some goodness on all this, 
they also have a very, very high chance to drop loot crates. Here was a little bit unlucky, but the luck, higher your luck stat is, the better. But uh, altogether, trees are highly valuable, and it totally is worth to pick up the tree item whenever you see it. It has a huge payoff, because it has... It increases the chances of loot massively, and it increases your healing potential and your material. So, really, trees are always good. Never say no to a tree. I haven't found any good reason so far that would counteract that argument. So, let me know in the comment section if there's really something really, really speaking against trees at some point, because I really, really haven't found anything yet. <laughs> so, let's keep up with number nine. You should be collecting material always. I mean, that sounds a little bit uh, stupid at first, but your playstyle, your movements should always be aimed around the question, where are the most green blips that I can reach safely without blowing myself up? Especially the last pot is the hot pot, but uh, work on your movements in that aspect, because Killing the guys is one part, but you need to pick up the stuff as well, because otherwise you won't be getting the rewards. While un not picked up materials will be put up in uh, some sort of a bank, so every uh, blip you haven't picked up will produce a blip that's worth double, but at the end of the day you need to pick these up as well. So. To, uh, to sum it up, it's really super important that you keep busy collecting that stuff and keeping that number as low as possible because that makes up how well you perform with your character in general. But by all means, never kill yourself for that loot. That's the other end of the spectrum. And that's where you need to dance around. So we're almost done. Let's head on over to number 10. Don't try everything at once. It goes a little bit into the same sector as avoiding unsynergistic items, but it's a little bit uh, something else. Like, it might sound like a great idea for some builds to go, for example, into crit chance because you are already super hitting hard and stuff's working out splendidly, but you're actually already killing stuff super fast, so it wouldn't be too smart to go into another sort of damage. Just go into defensive stats instead, or you find a you find some super cool engineering unique and you're all like, wow, I could totally dive into engineering. But actually, it is not that necessary and not that synergistic. Altogether, it's really, really important that you learn to not get distracted because there are so many good things roaming around and it can be sometimes hard to keep track of what's really a good idea and what just looks like something you can use. And ideally, you find that out with experimenting. And that's the uh, hidden number 11 that I didn't uh, put up in the header, but uh, number 11 is keep experimenting. Keep something, tr keep trying something new. Keep trying to have fun with this game because it has so many different approaches to every single um, problem. That's where the most fun lies in. So don't get too stale in your ideas and just uh, have fun, my friends. Okay, I hope you found that helpful. I am very, very glad that you've been watching this video. Let me know what you've been thinking about. Let me know what kind of beginner tricks you, or, and tips you would recommend. And of course, leave a thumbs up or a subscription if you'd be so kind. I'd be very, very happy. Apart from that, thanks for watching again and have a wonderful day.